Welcome, my Elder Scrolls loving, not Fallout loving, but also not Starfield loving, Fallout 76, disliking friends to another Elder Scrolls video. I'm your host, still not dead Nazim, and today we are going to be covering another decision. This decision in Skyrim is for once not NPC related or quest related, and it's something a bit harder to try and make a video out of, but I still wanted to try and tackle it anyway because they don't call me straight up milk for nothing. Seriously, I like milk guys, you thought I was being sarcastic but really I'm just full of calcium unlike you. It's pretty unfair of you to assume. Also if any of you like horror movies and are planning to go to the cinema anytime soon, please avoid seeing the new Annabelle movie. Please? I like the Conjuring universe but like, no, Annabelle you say? More like gouge my eyes out with common mediocrity but seriously, don't go and watch it. Go see a good movie like Toy Story 4 or maybe The Lion. King. Uh, meh. But sit back, my friends, and relax, because this is something I do know people have to consider before they start a new playthrough, and that's the difficulty they plan on playing through for their new character they just made again. It's 2019, guys. Come on. Don't you have other games to be playing, like Cars 2? You know, a great game? But anyway, enough babbling and banter, and yeah, I just said that proudly, you suckers. Sit back and relax as we discuss on whether you should play Skyrim on Legendary Difficulty. So with Legendary Difficulty in Skyrim, you have the option of wanting to make the game as not fun as humanly possible. And that's perfectly okay because you're a masochist and you enjoy enduring yourself to torturous pain constantly. In Skyrim, like Morrowind and Oblivion, you have a difficulty slider that you can move from left to right at any single moment to change the gameplay to your own needs. And to be honest, I do and I don't like this function. We will talk more about that later on, but for now let's focus on the core mechanic and that's the ability to slide that slider all the way to the right to set the game on legendary difficulty, something that wasn't originally there. In the original Oldrum in 2011 you could only go up as far as Master and that in itself was just pain but then the legendary edition was a thing and they added in the extra difficulty and that just made me want to swallow some nails. I'm pretty sure the update came in around 2013 and they also added in the additional never ending level cap where you basically completely sold all your souls to Todd to never stop playing the game ever. That includes mine too. But some Skyrim tryhard, I mean Skyrim expert players found the game too easy, even on master difficulty and maybe I just suck at the game. Now I know some of you are going to agree to this and you're mid type in the comment. Stop it now. But I just could not find my own ways to make master difficulty any way which fun for myself. But I know people have their own secret ways of doing stuff and glitching out the game but the closest I found was some exotic weapons. But let's talk a bit about the values of the difficulties and what separates legendary difficulty from the rest of them because let's be honest guys, why would you play master difficulty when you could just play legendary difficulty? Well I guess I'll tell you why. So the thing that separates each individual difficulty in the game is a modifier number that sets them apart from one another and they aren't too far off each other. Well, they are and they aren't. There are two modifiers that dictate the difficulties and they are the player damage dealt and the player damage taken and they range in their own values between novice, apprentice, adept, expert, master and legendary difficulty. The novice player damage death modifier starts at 2x while the adept sets itself to 1x. The expert goes into the floats at 0.75x and the legendary difficulty goes all the way down down to a measly setting of 0.25x and by god you feel it. The novice player damage taken modifier starts at 0.5x and the adept one goes to 1x. The expert difficulty has a player damage taken modifier of 1.5x and the legendary one has a 3x modifier. Holy Talos, that is a Christ on a cornflake. So now that you heard and know about the modifiers and their values, the great thing about both of these things is that they aren't going to make a slight bit of difference in regards to your decision. You are choosing Legendary.
So the only thing distinguishing the difficulties apart from one another is the modifiers that come with each one. And let's add to this experience, a drinking game for every time I say either the word legendary or modifier. Let's do it, but make sure your drink is healthy water or calcium kiddos. But to me, there is an entirely other thing that separates them apart and that is the experience you the player will get from playing the game and that particular difficulty. Everyone is different and that's something I realise. But hard games just make something inside me jiggle and spin. It, you know, it gets my grinds gearing and my gears grinding. I just love that extra stretch you get to experience and that feeling of satisfaction when you successfully kill an enemy. When I'm trying to platinum a game on PlayStation 4, seeing that one of the trophies is a new playthrough on hard kind of makes me happy. But here's the thing, I kind of always play my first playthrough on hard so get wrecked noob so if you enjoy casually playing games just for the story and combat isn't for you well then if you're still watching i'll take it you just kind of enjoy my company maybe i hope but if so thank you for sticking around i appreciate you for those who like a challenge i want to take the next step to legendary are you ready to spend hours and hours getting through dungeons compared to the single digit minutes you were getting through before like literally do you ember shard mine would maybe take me three to four minutes to clear with a particular route i know off the back of my hand but on legendary it takes me a solid 10 minutes to get through the enemies if i play the game the way it's supposed to so if you are okay with dungeons taking a lot more time, actually in general, if you are okay with the game taking you a lot more time, then this is definitely something you should consider and you will get way more out of your game. If you try and play Legendary exactly how you play a novice, apprentice, adept or even expert at times, then you are going to get completely and utterly annihilated like you have never been before and you can screw yourself over too. So let's talk about the things that will help you get get through legendary difficulty that you wouldn't necessarily use in lower difficulties. Bet you thought I'd do another text transition, but nah fam. This is still on the same point as before. We are still talking about why you should choose legendary difficulty. And I hope these kind of discussion videos are okay with you guys. I kind of have fun just writing up a script after doing some research and talking away. But like I said, the main aspect of doing the highest difficulty is you will get a ton more out of the core mechanics from Skyrim itself. Let's start with followers. Up until now you have probably used followers for either one of two things. One, you use them to carry all the crap you can't carry, and two, you use them to do the duplication glitch you can do in Skyrim. But on Legendary, if you plan on playing a non-tanky character, someone like an archer or an assassin or a bard or battle mage, well then you are 95% most likely going to need a follower and not just any follower in the game. Specific ones that fit the tank criteria because it's going to take you a long time to kill some of these enemies. I cannot stress this enough and you will need someone to tank all the enemy damage while you output yours to them. Example, in Bleak Falls Barrow you can use Jensine who can be bought in the Drunken Huntsman for a wee bit of gold as one of your first followers to absorb as much damage as human possible while you use your magic or bow. But that leads me to my next point and that is the fact that one weapon type is probably not going to cut it with this difficulty. Just using magic will probably not work out for you and if it does you have a lot of money sir or ma'am. Without glitching you are going to burn through your magic in seconds in every fight and unless you've stocked on magic potions have fun running around waiting for your bars to refill you might want to burst them down with magic. Then Maybe take out a bow or even take out a big ass sword you were using. Just leave yourself to some options so you don't end up stuck in a death loop in the middle of a dungeon. And all the weapons you use, make sure they are good. Iron and steel stuff probably aren't going to suffice so you might want to look into finding some orc stuff or even ebony stuff early in the game to give yourself that edge. I'm sure a wiki can tell you where to find them early. Now once you go into the bigger and longer dungeons, restoration magic will only get you so far, again, unless you've stockpiled a thousand magical potions, it will not keep you healed forever, so you will want to use more consumables. Now of course use your wisdom and the power of the internet to get and keep gold efficiently so you aren't ever fully running out of it, and if you are, make sure you can make it back in a dungeon you go delving into. You are going to be 
constantly either buying potions or making them. No harm in some alchemy at this point, even if it's just dabbling in healing potions, because you are going to take damage that is inevitable. And depending on the enemy you encounter, it may take 5 hits to kill you, it may take 1. Trust me, at level 1, bandit outlaws can 2 shot you with 2 normal swings. It's pretty ridiculous, but you signed your soul away years ago. But take your time going through dungeons and fighting the enemies you encounter. Rushing will get you nowhere. Trust me, it is a pretty big task to take on and thank god this game doesn't support level scaling like Oblivion. Seriously, Oblivion on highest difficulty is just something else. If you think enemies on Legendary and Skyrim are bullet sponges, try managing your stamina in Oblivion whilst bandits are wearing Daedric armor at level 15. Oh, the horrors. But yeah, between getting more out of companions, getting more out of consumables and getting more out of your playstyles, there are three things that can make the experience all the much better for you, or at least in my opinion. So you finally get to use companions and the cool thing is before I played on legendary difficulty I really didn't enjoy using companions, I found them to just get in my way and annoy me but now I kind of always like having one. The fact that some of them absorb so much damage just makes my life that much bit easier and whilst they are taking damage you are dealing it in various different ways, opening up playstyles you might have never tried before. And then you get to make more use of consumables, some of them are still going to be 100% useless like potions granting you regeneration and stuff like that but at least you can use healing, magicka and stamina potions more. But yeah, that is why you should play Skyrim on Legendary Difficulty and I hope this video at least helped convince you to give it a shot on a new character to see what it's like. If you don't want to do the intro, just mod it. Use the alternate start mod, it's a wonderful mod that I love using and if you are in need of a companion, did you know there is this awesome Maik the Liar mod you can download for free to oh, some cool Irish guy made. <laughs> But yeah guys, that about wraps up this video for you all. I really do hope you enjoyed watching and I helped entice your decisions once again. Make sure to leave me some suggestions in the comment below for other decisions we should try. Some of them may seem stupid but like, I kinda just have fun making these videos and I hope they are at least some sort of decent background noise for you to listen to while you work or whatever. So thank you for watching nonetheless. If you enjoy my comments, content like this video or just like me then consider leaving a like as it seriously helps me out in the long run and if you don't like my channel don't like this video or don't like me then maybe leave a dislike either way all forms of ratings help me out and i love you all nonetheless no matter what you choose to do i appreciate all forms of ratings and criticism i get make sure to comment what you thought below in the comment section but anyways my friends enough babble i hope you all have a wonderful day if not that a wonderful week and if not that a wonderful wonderful month and if not that at least a good year and I'll see you all in the next one.